Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Hey, everybody. It is Wednesday night at Life United. I am so, so thankful to be here uh, to speak to you this evening. Uh, We are in a series called Powerless, and it's about the Holy Spirit. We've been in this series for several weeks now, and I'm telling you, every week it just gets better. And uh, so tonight, uh, we're just going to dive right back into some really, really good content, again, concerning the Holy Spirit. I want to start out with this moment uh, that Jesus had. You're probably familiar with it. It's been preached on and taught about a lot, but it's about the, the time that Jesus was invited into a home and the uh, owner's home was named Martha and she had a sister by the name of Mary. And, and so if you'll recall, uh, when Jesus came into the house, uh, Martha was busy doing stuff and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to what Jesus had to say. And, and, and Martha goes in to, and speaks to Jesus. <laughs> hey, Jesus, would you tell her to help me? I'm just running myself crazy trying to get all this stuff done. And uh, Jesus said, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, not gonna do that because Mary is in the perfect place. And here's, uh, here's one thing that I wanna point out. There are many things that I could say about that uh, moment in time. There are a lot of great lessons there, but here's the, here's, the, here's the thing that I want you to see tonight. Jesus was present in Martha's house, but Martha didn't benefit from his presence. <laughs> I'm gonna say that one more time. Jesus was present. He was in Martha's house, but Martha did not benefit from his presence. The point that I want to make is that quite often the same thing is true about the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is in our lives. The moment that we're born again, the moment that we ask Jesus Christ to be our Savior, the Holy Spirit is in our lives. But quite often for a lot of Christians, a lot of believers, and this is unfortunate, Jesus is present in, excuse me, the Holy Spirit is present in their life, but they don't benefit from his presence. Let me remind you of what Jesus said in John 14, 17. It says, he, talking about the Holy Spirit, he is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. But you recognize him. He's talking to his followers, talking to these, the believers that were with him. But you recognize him because he lives with you and pay close attention to this next part. He will be in (laughs) you. Now, again, when the reason Jesus said he will be in you is because Jesus was speaking to the disciples before the cross, okay? Before the cross. This is a conversation that had before that they, that he had with them before the death, burial, and resurrection. We know that after the death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus gave this commandment. He said, go to Jerusalem, to the same group of people, go to, um, go to Jerusalem and you stay there, you wait there because I'm gonna send you the best friend you've ever had. He is the Holy Spirit. Go back and read the book of Acts and you see that uh, what happened was, was that, that God on the day of Pentecost, that God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, filled the upper room where these individuals were at, filled them, meaning he took up residence within them, on the inside of them. And so this whole series really is to inspire you, to encourage you, for some of you to remind you that the Holy Spirit lives in you. You need to recognize that. You need to remember that. You need to know this, that the Holy Spirit lives in you. And and here's what you want to do. You want to take full advantage of his presence in your life. You want to take full advantage of that. And really that's what this series, uh, this entire series is about. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you will, be, you will be powerless in regards to what God has for you to do. You're going to be powerless in regards to the craziness that takes place in the world. Uh, you're going to be powerless when it comes to uh, hearing what God has to say to you. But if you flip that and you recognize, you embrace, you uh, develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit that's in you, uh, it's just the opposite. You will have power when challenges come. You will have power to hear God's voice. You will have power to do all that he's called you to do. And so again, that's what this series is, is all about. I'm going to jump 
uh, into uh, something that I talked on, taught on a couple of Wednesday nights ago, and it's built around this question. The question is this, does God speak to people? Does God, does God speak to people? And the answer is absolutely, for sure, he speaks to people. Let me, let me run through a couple examples of this in um, Genesis chapter 12, verse one. This is uh, talking about Abram. Now, the Lord said to Abram, the Lord spoke to Abram. He said to Abram, he talked to Abram, and here's what he said, leave your country, your family, and your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. That it was this moment, this day, God spoke to Abram and said, Abram, I got a plan for your life and you got to move. You got to take a step from where you are. You know, sometimes that's required from, uh, in regards to doing what God's called you to do. You got to take a step from where you are. That's what God spoke to he said to Abram, and thankfully, Abram obeyed. Well, let me give you, let me give you another example, and I think this is, is uh, coupled with some of the greatest advice when it comes to God speaking to people. Again, this is another moment that happened. God's talking to people. Uh, in other words, let me say that again. This is another example of God speaking to people, but it's also coupled with a great uh, bit of wisdom. And I'm gonna unpack this just for a moment. It's um, where, where it's in, found in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Set this up just a little bit. Uh, Samuel, uh, Samuel was living in, in the temple with a priest named Eli, all right? And the reason Samuel was there is because Hannah, uh, his mom, Samuel's mom, had made this promise to God. God, if you give me a child, if you give me a son, I will make sure that I give him back to you and you use him for your plan and your purpose. God kept his side of the deal and um, Hannah kept hers. Well, so she brought Samuel. He was, he was raised in the house of God. And, 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 and he has this experience one night. He has this experience. He's laying in one room and Eli is in another room and he thinks that he hears Eli calling him. Eli's up in age and so he, he, he immediately goes into where Eli is sleeping and he says, I'm, I'm here, what, what, what do you need? You said something and Eli's like, no boy, I didn't say a word. Go back to bed. And, and so, so uh, 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 Samuel goes back to his place where he was sleeping he lays back down and it happens again. And so Samuel runs back in and Eli's there. And, and um, Samuel says, I, I heard you say you called my name. And, and Eli's like, no, no, go back to bed, man. Come on, boy, go back to bed. You're ruining my sleep. Well, it, it happened again. And finally, Samuel realized what was happening, what was going on. He realized that God was speaking to Samuel and Samuel wasn't recognizing it. God was speaking to Samuel, but Samuel wasn't recognizing. And here, here is what, here is what um, Samuel advised, advised, excuse me, Eli advised Samuel to do. Here, here's what he said. Eli said to Samuel, watch this, go lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If he calls you, Eli says to Samuel, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so Samuel went and lay down in his place. And here is the wisdom. Here is the wisdom that we can draw from this moment that Eli spoke and spoke into Samuel's life. Here's what Samuel was saying. He was saying, listen, Samuel, you make sure that you listen for God's voice. You listen for God to speak. That's the reason that Samuel told, uh, excuse me, Eli told Samuel, he says, if he calls, if he calls, in other words, Eli is telling Samuel, son, make sure that you are listening. So if God speaks again, make sure you are listening for his voice. This is so, so good. But then he also goes on to say, this is the wisdom, listen to what he has to say. Eli is speaking to, 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 uh, to Samuel and he's saying, again, listen for what God has to say, but he takes it another step and he says to make sure that you listen 
to what God has to say. That is the reason that uh, Eli instructed Samuel to say, to respond, when he heard God speak, he instructed him to say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. Your servant is listening. Great, great um, bit of wisdom here. Great, great advice here when it comes to hearing God and hearing God speak. Make sure, he says, you're listening for God to speak, but also make sure that you listen to, listen for, but also listen to. Um, listen to verse 10. It says, then the, Lord, uh, then the Lord came and stood and called as he did the other time, Samuel, Samuel, watch this, and Samuel said, in other words, he heard, he was listening, but then Samuel responded, speak for your servant is listening. And it was at that point that God began to speak to Samuel about his plan and, and Samuel's role in God's plan that in that, in that, for that generation, in that, in that time period. In the last book of the Bible, we see some of the same advice. We see it in, in uh, Revelation 3.22. It says, whoever has ears to hear, in other words, be listening, be listening for God's voice. Whoever has ears to hear, they're really listening for God. Watch this. Let them hear, pay close attention to this because the language changes a little bit. Let them hear, let them listen to what the Spirit capital S, talking about the Holy Spirit, says to the churches. Last book of the Bible, Revelation 3, same thing. Listen, ears, have ears to hear, be listening for God. But he also says, make sure that you hear, you listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Why? Because God spoke to people in the Old Testament and God is speaking uh, to, to people today under the New Covenant or the New Testament that we're living in. But today he is speaking through the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus predicted this. Jesus predicted this in John chapter 10, verse 27, when he said this, this is the promise that he made. He said, my sheep will hear my voice. In other words, Jesus is talking about the future. He's talking about us. And he's saying, my people, they will hear my voice because I'm going to be saying some things. But then he goes on to say this in the latter part of verse 27, he says this, he said, they will hear my voice and I know each one and they will follow me. In other words, not only are they gonna be listening for my voice, but they're also, not, not, not only are they gonna be hearing and listening for my voice, but they're also gonna be listening to my voice and what I have to say because they're gonna follow me. That's, that's powerful, isn't it? And all of this happens, all of this happens because of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you want this promise to become reality, the promise that God speaks to people, if you want this reality active in your life, if you want it active in your life, you want to hear from God, you want to hear, you want to take Jesus up on his promise about the sheep and hearing and following. If you want that to happen, here's my first point this morning, this evening. You got to make sure you get this right. First point for all you note takers out there, you write this one down. You have to value his voice. You have to value God's voice. In other words, hearing and listening for God's voice must be a priority. Listening for God to speak to you must be priority if you wanna hear him speak. You gotta be listening for him and it's gotta be at the top of the list. L listen, listen, to, listen, to, um, um, listen, listen to this point. I wrote this down spe specifically for you guys tonight. It says, you will, always, you will always listen for what adds value to your life. In other words, you'll always listen for what adds value to your life. And, and the one, listen, the one you believe makes your life better. In other words, you're always gonna be listening for the one that you believe is gonna make your life better. You're always gonna be listening to individuals. You're always gonna be listening to other people. You're always gonna be listening for the voice that you believe is gonna make your life better. But listen to what Jesus said in John 16, 13 about the Holy Spirit. He says, the Holy Spirit is coming, watch this, and he will lead you into all truth. Pay close attention to this part. Now, Jesus is talking about the role of the Holy Spirit that lives in you, all right? The Holy Spirit is coming. He has come, right? He will lead you into all truth. Pay close attention to this part, talking about hearing and, and his voice being a priority. Hearing his voice being a priority. He will not speak his own words. He will speak what he hears. 
He will speak what he hears and he will tell you of things to come. So here's what I want you to see this evening. It's the Holy Spirit that lives in you. He's resident in your life right now. And, and, and he, wants, he wants to speak to you, but it's real important that you understand who, who is speaking to you. Yes, it's the Holy Spirit, but Jesus here says this. He said the Holy Spirit is going to talk to people, but he's going to say, uh, he's going to say some things on somebody's behalf. Because again, he says here, he says that he will not speak his own words. He will speak what he, what he hears. So who is the Holy Spirit listening to? This is so good. Talking about valuing the voice of God and it being important to you, hearing it, hearing God's voice is so important. So, so important. So who are we listening for? Who are we listening to? Well, in verse 16 of, excuse me, in verse 14 of John chapter 16, he clarifies who the Holy Spirit is listening to. John 16, 14 says, he will bring me glory, talking about the Holy Spirit, watch this, by telling you whatever he receives from me. (laughs) So essentially, here is what Jesus is saying about the Holy Spirit. He's saying, I'm gonna talk to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is going to talk to people who are uh, willing to listen. That is amazing because sometimes we think, well, Jesus is at the right hand of God and he is, and he's just kind of hanging out there. Well, well, yes, he's there, but I'm telling you, Jesus is busy talking to his people because again, Jesus said, I'm gonna talk and my sheep are gonna know my voice and they're gonna follow me. I think this is so great. But, and, and, and here's the reason this is so important. It's so important to be listening for God, to be listening to what Jesus has to say to us today on a personal level, certainly as a corporate level. But I I think this is so, so important because there are a lot of voices out there that you could be listening to. Matter of fact, today, there's more noise in the world. There are more voices that are out there. There's more crazy sounding advice and wisdom and trash out there today. Then there's more today than any time on the planet. There's more than the today than the history of all of mankind. There's just a bunch of crazy noise. That's the reason it is important that we have a value and that value is listening for what Jesus has to say to his church through the person of the Holy Spirit that lives in each and every one of us. And here's, here's a big reason that it's important that, that we are listening for what Jesus has to say. Here's the reason it's so important. One big reason is that Jesus will always tell you the rest of the story. One big reason that it's important to listen for Jesus speaking through the person of the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Jesus will always tell us and tell you, tell me the rest of the story. Let me give you an example. Uh, the example of uh, when Jesus fed the 5,000. Let me, let me rephrase that. Actually, Jesus didn't feed the 5,000. His disciples fed the 5,000 and Jesus helped them do it. <laughs> I can show you that scripturally. Matthew chapter 14, verse 15, it says, so, so Jesus is with the disciples and they're preaching, or excuse me, Jesus is preaching to just thousands of people. He's preaching, he'd been preaching all day and they've been, he's been ministering all day. And so uh, we pick up in verse 15, it says, as the evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's uh, getting really late. Jesus, you've been preaching all day. <laughs> Long-winded preachers, you know, you gotta watch them. This is a remote place and it's getting really late. Watch this, send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. They thought this is a great idea, right? Maybe they were off to the side. The disciples were like, you know, guys, it's getting really late. We're all tired and we're all worn out. Let's just go to Jesus and tell Jesus, hey, Jesus, send these people home so they can eat. Don't you know it's running late? It's, it's, it's late in the evening and they just need to go and <laughs> we do too. And, so it looks like that's the end of the story, but, but listen to what, again, Jesus said, Jesus spoke. Jesus spoke, Jesus said, right? That's not necessary. <laughs> You're gonna feed them. That's the rest of the story. In other words, the disciples had the idea, bright idea, brilliant idea, that they would send everybody home. They thought that was the end of the story, but here's what Jesus said. (laughs) That's not the end of the story, guys. The end of the story 
is this. You're going to feed them. You're going to make a difference in their life. You're going to take responsibility for influencing these people. You're going to take the responsibility for making a difference in their lives, guys. And of course, they freaked out. And they're like, there's no way that could ever happen. We don't have very much. We just have to a few loaves and some fishes. That's all we've got. Jesus said, that's, listen, here's the great thing about Jesus. Jesus didn't, doesn't need a lot to work with. He just needs something, right? And so what happened was, you know the story, Jesus um, instructed the disciples, make sure that you organize it. Let's get a little system going here. And he, uh, Jesus got what they had. It says he broke the bread, he blessed it, broke it, and he began to distribute it and began to distribute it to the people. No, he distributed it to the disciples that distributed it to the people. Jesus told them to feed the 5,000 that it was their responsibility to do it. It was their responsibility to make a difference in their lives. And Jesus partnered with them to ensure that that was gonna take place. I think that's amazing. You know what? Listen to me. Jesus is still saying the same thing to his people today, to you, to me, that we're called to make a difference in people's lives. We don't have to do it by ourselves. We have each other, but also we have the Holy Spirit. We have Jesus giving us direction. We have Jesus giving our marching orders. We have Jesus giving the commission that he's given us. And that commission, our marching orders are to go make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, that's one of the reasons that we have the Holy Spirit in us to empower us to be difference makers in the world today. That is what Jesus is still saying today. We can't, we, we, we can, st- we can say, if we want, hey, it's somebody else's responsibility to reach the world. It's somebody else's responsibility to serve on the dream team. It's somebody else's responsibility to make a difference in people's lives. But you know what? That's, that, that, there, there's more to the story and more to the story is Jesus is saying, yes, you go make a difference. And I'm gonna tell you something, guys. You will never be more fulfilled in your life. Never will you be more fulfilled in your life than when you are making a difference in people's lives because that is the heart of Jesus. That is what Jesus is saying even even today. There's another example of of, um, what looked like was the end of the road, the end of the story. Again, we're talking about the importance, the value of hearing what Jesus has to say. Jesus will always tell you the rest of the story. He'll always tell you the rest of the story. He'll always speak that through the person of the Holy Spirit. That's the reason we've got to be listening for the voice of God. Martha, her heart was broken. And the reason that her heart was broken is that her brother Lazarus had passed away. I mean, it was, it was, it was tragic. Martha's heart was broken. Mary's heart was broken. Jesus was nowhere around. I mean, it was just a bad deal. People were gathering and they were all mourning and they were crying and which rightfully so, Lazarus had, was gone and, and that's what you do, right? When someone passes away. And, then, and, and so, so it, it looks like the end of the story because Lazarus is gone. <laughs> but then Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up. I love this. It looked like it was the end of the story. But Jesus always will tell you the rest of the story, right? He'll say, it's not over. The story's still being written. And that's what happened with Martha because Jesus showed up and, 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 and <laughs> I absolutely, absolutely love this. Martha was like, Jesus, if you had just been here earlier, if, if you would have just been here on time, if you would have just gotten here, you know, before he passed away, he wouldn't have passed away, I'm convinced of it. And he said, listen, girl, <laughs> it doesn't matter if I'm early or late, I'm always right on time. And if you would just trust me, believe me, you're gonna see something amazing that takes place. So then Jesus picks up in the story here, because again, for Jesus, Jesus will always tell you the rest of the story. And what he was telling Martha was, Martha, this is not the end of the story. Just because you think he drew his last breath, it's not the end of the story. So listen to what Jesus said to Martha in John chapter 11, verse 40. It says, then then Jesus said, there he is again, he's talking, he's saying. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? 
He's telling Martha, he's saying to Martha, it's not the end of the story. All you got to do is believe. And if you'll just believe, you'll see something miraculous take place. And she's already even said, that's a big deal, Jesus, because he is thinking he's been dead for days. But Jesus, again, didn't back off. He was saying, the story's not over, Martha. If you'll just believe, you'll see something incredible. You'll see the glory of God. You'll see something amazing take place. You'll see the impossible happen because it's not the end of the story, girl. What happened? He gave instructions to have the, the, the stone of a Lazarus tomb rolled away. And, and I love what the Bible says it, with, with, with an enormous amount of authority, with enormous, an, an enormous amount of power. Jesus spoke and called Lazarus out of that tomb. And I love what happened. Lazarus comes out of that tomb. How do you know some folks got, um, Jesus got some folks' attention when Lazarus walks out of the, they were not, they were not worried about his odor at that point. They were just amazed because they had seen and realized that when Jesus said the story's not over, the story is not over. Now, here's the point that I want to make and the importance of listening for God and Jesus speaking into your life through the person of the Holy Spirit and always telling you the rest of the story because you could have a dream that's been dead a long time. Maybe you used to pray these big, bold, crazy awesome, amazing prayers for something uh, big. But you since stop because maybe you've been disappointed. You see, hadn't seen things happen the way that you thought it was gonna happen. Maybe you're just down in regards to your faith and you've laid those dreams down. You've kicked those dreams to the side and you're, you're, you're like, they're, they're dead, it's over. But I, I, want, I want you to know something. The Holy Spirit lives in you. And if you're listening for Jesus to speak to you, he could very well say, hey, listen, listen, listen. Get that dream back out because there's more to the story. That's not the end of the story. Let me get involved in that dream. Let me get involved in that prayer. Let me be involved because Jesus will always, always, always tell you the rest of the story and encourage you to let him work. Don't give in, don't, don't give up. That is a word for somebody. Right now, Jesus just spoke to you through the person of the Holy Spirit and you're responding to him and you're saying, you know what? I'm getting that dream out. I'm getting my dream back for a healthy marriage because I believe if I'll just do my part, Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit will do theirs. It's powerful. You want, listen, you want to hear and you want to make sure, you want to, let me say it this way, you want to make it a priority that you are listening for the voice of God because Jesus has some things to say to you today, listen to me, that will make your life better. It will make your life so much better. If you want this, if you want God active in your life, if you want to hear what Jesus says through the person of the Holy Spirit, the next thing you, uh, you need to do, remember, just write this down. We only got two points tonight. I know most people are like, but Pastor John, you always give three. I just got two tonight. You ready for this? You got to listen. And this is exactly what Eli told Samuel. You've got to listen to what Jesus is saying. Don't, don't just listen for it. That's important. Don't listen just for his voice and what, what, listen, listen for what he's got to say. You've got to make sure that you're listening to what he has to say. And here's the reason you want to listen to what Jesus has to say through the person of the Holy Spirit. This is the reason. It's found, go back to John chapter 16, verse 13. It says, the Holy Spirit is coming, watch this, and he will lead you into all truth. You wanna to listen to the Holy Spirit. You wanna to listen to what Jesus is saying through the Holy Spirit because he will lead you into all truth. He will lead you into all truth. Listen, the truth he leads you into is God's truth. He'll, he'll always lead you. Jesus, speaking through the person of the Holy Spirit, will always lead you into God's truth, which is God's best for you. And here's the reason this is so important. Often, what we believe is the best and what actually is the best are two different things. So it's crucial that we get this. Let me say this again. Often, what we believe is the best and what truly is God's best are two different things. 
Uh, let, me, let me take you back, to give you an example. Let me take you back to the pool of Bethesda. Another great moment in the gospels, right? Pool of Bethesda. There were, there were, there were people that were uh, lame, they were sick, and they were laying all around this big pool. And, and at, at, at certain times it was unannounced, nobody knew when it was gonna happen. As tradition, tradition says that there was an angel that would come stir the water. And, and the first person, just the first person that made it into the pool when the waters were being stirred, they got healed. So there were people all around the pool and there had been uh, some that were there just for a few days and there were some that had been there for many years. And so Jesus walked into, in that moment, it was on a Sabbath, he walked in and he finds this guy that had been there a long time. And, and, and here, is, here is what Jesus um, asked him. He said, um, do you wanna walk? Do you wanna get up? And the guy said, yes. And here is what the gentleman believed was the best. This is what he believed he needed, right? He believed that he needed someone to help him and get him in the pool when the water stirred because that was the tradition. But Jesus said, no, no, that's not what you need. What you need is to get up and walk. Jesus' truth was what you need to do is trust and believe and get up and walk Take your mat and get out of here. That was Jesus' truth. So again, the man believed his truth in his world was, I just need somebody to help me get in the pool. But Jesus' truth was, no, you don't need that. This is my truth. This is what you need to do. You need to listen. And thankfully, the man listened. He got up and he began to walk. A miraculous thing happened. Why? Because he chose to believe Jesus' truth over his. And so it's so crucial, it's so crucial that we understand the importance of listening, just not for, but listening to what Jesus has to say to us through the person of the Holy Spirit because Jesus is always going to lead us into his truth, which is the absolute best for us. Listen to what Hebrews chapter three, verse six and eight says, through eight. It says, but Christ as the son is in charge of God's entire house. He's talking about us. Well, he says it right here. He says, and we are God's house. So who's in charge of God's entire house? Jesus, the son of God, Christ, is entire, uh, in charge of, of, of God's entire house and we are God's house. We are God's what? House. The Holy Spirit lives in us. We are his house. If we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope uh, in Christ, verse seven says, that is why the Holy Spirit says, today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. In other words, when you're listening for and you hear the Spirit's voice, when you hear what Jesus has to say through the Holy Spirit, watch this, make sure that you don't just listen for it, make sure that you listen to what Jesus has to say. Why? Because he will always lead you into the truth that God has for you, the very best that God has for you. And every single time that you listen to what Jesus has to say through the Holy Spirit that lives in you, you take another step in God's plan for your life. Every time that you listen, you take another step forward in God's plan. Every time that you listen and you get that instruction and as he's leading you into, the tr into his truth, which is his best for your life, what happens is, is that you take another step in God's plan. And I'd like to say that I have got this right all the time. And there have been times and I could stand up here and tell you several times that, man, I, I, just, I, just, got it, I just gotten it right. Now I can get, I can get, remember the challenges that we were going through as, as, as I'm pastoring church, uh, churches and pastoring people. And man, it was just like, it looked like the end of the story is what it looked like in several times, several cases. But, but, but I would just listen for God to speak. I was listening for, cause I had to hear him. I mean, it, it was, there was a lot on the line. I would listen for and I, and I would hear him speak and I would also listen to him and then begin to walk things out and just saw some incredible things that, that happened. But, but there are also times that I hadn't gotten it right. <laughs> one time, one time, this is back when Sandy and I were, uh, Sandy and I were preparing to uh, go overseas for our very, very first missions assignment. And uh, we were preparing to go to Romania. 
And, and uh, back in the day, we had a little, uh, a little Dodge Caravan. It was the family wagon. It was the family ride. <laughs> it was a little minivan. It was actually a pretty cool little ride. And, and so we, we, uh, we were traveling different places and, and, and sharing vision. And, and there were people that are getting on board and helping us uh, by supporting us financially. And, um, uh, and so I had this invitation to go to this church over in Texas. And, and so this invitation was from someone that I, I really, really respect. I had a lot of respect for this, this pastor. He'd been in ministry a long time. And uh, just, just, a, just a great man of God today. Actually, he's in, he's in, he's in heaven. But man, I respected him. And, and, and so uh, we, were, we were a few hours away at a missions conference uh, in, during the week. And during the week, I'd actually had the, 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 car, excuse me, the minivan, had, had it all tuned up. And had, then they had spark plug wires and all that stuff. And they had the, all that stuff. I had all that replaced because I didn't want anything to go wrong on this trip, you know. And so we, we picked it up from the shop. We went back to the hotel, loaded everything up, loaded the girls up. They're like probably two and three years old then, something like that. And away we go from Louisiana. We're going towards Texas. And I'll never forget this. We went through this little, not a little, it's a big rainstorm. Just came out of nowhere, just dumped tons of water on the road, you know, as, it, as it's raining just so, so hard. And then, uh, so we, we hit the water in the road and, and then all of a sudden the van began to, to miss really, really bad. I mean, it was sputtering and I was, uh, so I pulled over on the side of the road and just to let you know, I'm fairly mechanically inclined. Know my way around the engine compartment a little bit. And, 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 and so my first thought was, oh, this is the wrong time for this. And I just had had it repaired, excuse me, I just had it tuned up and I just had all this, a lot of stuff changed out on it. So I opened the hood and I look under the hood, nothing, I can see nothing wrong. I get back in the van and of course my wife, my precious wife, Sandy is there. She says, John, what about the distributor cap? Do you think it could be the distributor cap? And, and I, I'm, I'm thinking, number one, and I'm thinking this, I'm just being honest, I'm thinking this, I'm thinking, number one, I had all that replaced. That was part of what I had replaced in the tune-up. Number two, I'm thinking, this is the truth. I'm thinking, she has no idea what the distributor cap is. I'm thinking if, if, if I went and opened the hood and said, point to the distributor cap, I know she couldn't do it. I just do, because I know her well. She could put gas in it and she could drive that thing very, very well. So I got back in it. Of course, we did something super spiritual. We'd write, rightly so. We prayed over the van. I started it back up, ran fine. So we took off and driving. And then it begins to do it again. Hit some more rain. It begins to do it again. And it, by this point, I'm getting, <laughs> shall I say, uh, a little frustrated because I could feel the pressure that I don't want these, you know, we got to get to Texas. And so, so I open the hood and, and get look, look and get back and Back in, and Sandy says, I, I know you're a little bit uh, frustrated, John. I know you're a little bit upset, but do you think it could be the distributor cap? And I said, sweetheart, no, it's not the distributor cap. I've had all that replaced. All that stuff is brand new. I had it all replaced. We prayed over it, and, and, and we started, and it, it kept on driving, and it, and it just kept doing the same thing. So finally, we limped into this little bitty town, and it had an auto zone in, there, in the town. And so I, 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 I pulled in and I got out and I opened the hood again and I thought, just so she won't say anything else about the distributor cap, I'm gonna look at the distributor cap. And so I pulled a wire off that went from the distributor cap to this other part. I pulled it off and when I pulled it off, I saw this white film on the end that was connected to the distributor cap. I looked at that and I looked at the top of the distributor cap and it had some just white, a lot of white film in there. It looked weird, like a powder almost. So I walked inside and I held the thing up to the, the part up to the, uh, the wire up to the, 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 the guy that was behind the counter. I said, is there anything wrong with this? And he looked at it and he said, oh yeah, that's defective. I said, do you have another one? And he said, sure, I'll get you one. So he got me one and so me one. I went and cleaned it, everything back up, put it back together. And I'll never forget this. I remember as I'm getting, walking back, about to get back in the vehicle, I've got a choice to make. <laughs> yeah, you already know where I'm going with this one. I'm thinking, should I tell her or should I not? Should I tell her or should I not? I thought, no, I have to. I have to because I know that God was speaking through Sandy in that moment. I knew it. I knew it because I knew she had no idea what that distributor, uh, where a distributor cap was on that vehicle. And in fact, it had something to do with that distributor. So I'm driving along, I'm thinking all this. And then finally, I, I turned over to Sandy. I said, Sweet, I got to tell you something. She said, what is it? She's so gracious. I said, 
it had something to do with the distributor cap. She said, are you serious? She said, John, I'm telling you that was God because I don't even know where the distributor cap is. And in my mind, I'm thinking, yes, I know, <laughs> I know. And here's what the Lord spoke to me in that moment. The Holy Spirit spoke this to me, to me in, in that moment. He said, John, not only did you not listen to what I was trying to tell you through her, you weren't listening, you weren't hearing for it, and you certainly weren't listening in this moment, but you've been doing it for several, several months. I'm gonna tell you, when he said that to me, it was, it was just like something pierced my soul. You know why? Because God, Jesus, was speaking through the person of the Holy Spirit, actually through my wife several times. And you know what? I wasn't listening to what God had to say. I wasn't listening to what Jesus had to say through the person of the Holy Spirit. That has happened on more than one occasion, sadly, in John's life, as moments like that, that God may be using somebody, but also it's happened on more than one occasion when he just spoke directly to me, when Jesus, through the person of the Holy Spirit, would speak, and, and I didn't listen to him. And here's the point that I want to make this evening. Listen, not only do you want to listen for the voice of Jesus speaking through the person of the Holy Spirit in your life, but you also want to listen to him. You want to listen to heed what he has to say because he'll always lead you in to his truth by his truth and his truth for your, uh, for your life and the very best that he has designed for you. This is such a big, big deal. Again, I want to wrap up this evening with the way that I started. Are you, like, are you like Martha, that Jesus was in the house, but she didn't benefit from his presence in regards to the Holy Spirit being in your life? If not, listen, you got to start today and determine in your heart and your mind that you are going to, to, to set your heart and set your mind on hearing what God has to say through the person of the Holy Spirit what Jesus has to say through the person of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm telling you, he will always, always help you by telling you the rest of the story to not quit, not give up, not give in. And he'll always, always, always lead you into the truth that he has for your life, his truth. <laughs> and it's always the best. Listen, listen as if your life depended on it because the reality of it is, it does. Your life depends on listening for and listening to what Jesus has to say through the person of the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't, you may be alive, but you're just existing. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to have the role that he desires to have in your life, you'll begin to move in the very, into the very best that God has for you. Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus and I bless you. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your grace. So, so thankful for the person of the Holy Spirit. I believe tonight that there are people that are deciding, they're choosing to allow you, Holy Spirit, to have an active part in their life, to play the role that Jesus sent him, that the Father sent him to play in their life, that they're listening for what Jesus has to say through the Holy Spirit, but they're also listening to. They're listening, they're taking it seriously, and they're walking out as he's leading all of us into his very best, which is the truth for our lives. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you, Jesus, that you're still speaking to us through the person of the Holy Spirit. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.